Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I'm here today to talk about my favorite reads of 2021. So I decided I wanted to play with eyeshadow today. So that is what you're seeing now. Um, I am, I actually, unfortunately, tested positive for COVID a couple days ago, so I am in quarantine, and that is why I am here with crazy blue eyeshadow, even though, honestly, I would do this to go out anyway. But yeah, I unfortunately did test positive. I am vaccinated, so my symptoms are very mild. I have like a little bit of a cough. I'm a little bit congested, but that's honestly it. So I'm thankful for that, thankful to be healthy, that my family's healthy, and thankful for 2022. We're gonna get started on a good note. Um, even though I'm stuck at home, I am able to read a lot, which is a benefit. You gotta see the good, you know? <laughs> but already we're off to a good start for the reading year. I also am starting a reading journal, a reading bullet journal this year. So I'm gonna be posting some videos of that in the future. Lots of things I'm excited about for this year, lots of goals. But I wanted to just take this time to reflect on the previous year. It was a pretty good reading year for me. I'm gonna do a separate video with all the stats of the year, but I ended up reading 86 books, which is crazy. I had no idea that that's where I would get with those. Uh, I originally had a goal of, I think, gosh, I can't even really remember. I read a lot of a lot more than expected in 2022 so I made my goal slightly more ambitious I think my goal was 80 books I think I'll put my Goodreads um my Goodreads info on here you can also always follow me over there um I love making new friends on there and of course if you don't already if you followed my bookstagram I'd really appreciate that I'll put that on the screen also I'd love to have you guys over there I post a lot over there now um and my goals this year is to post more on there also so Hopefully um, that'll get started. I also have a TikTok and uh, I don't really post anything on there, but that's one of my goals too, because I think TikTok's fun and I have found a lot of really good books through TikTok. So I'm probably gonna start using that a little bit more this year. Yeah, so I'm gonna have a whole different video um, all about like my stats and stuff of everything I read last year. And then maybe like my goals and what I'm excited to read this upcoming year. So just stay tuned for all of that. I have a lot of stuff planned within my 10 days that I cannot leave my house. I have six books in total, and it's really hard for me to pick like a number one, but I think I've done it. I think I have a number one, but I don't think that the rest I'm gonna put in any order. We'll see, not 100% sure, but the majority of the books that I have that are in my top six are, I have three fantasy, which are these three right here. I definitely read the most fantasy this year. Uh, I also read a lot of thrillers, Oh wait, no, I have more than six books. Hold on. Eight books in my top eight books because I forgot the other two I don't have a physical copy of right now. So, um, but yes, we have three fantasy, one thriller, one historical fiction, one sci-fi, one manga, and one nonfiction. So a pretty widespread of my top books, which I think is pretty cool. One of my goals in the, spoiler alert, one of my goals in this upcoming year is to read more diverse, just in general, more diverse authors, more diverse um, genres, just more diverse as a whole, um, and to read more nonfiction and more classics. So those are a couple of my goals, um, but let's get started first. Okay, I think I can put these in order really quick. Hold on. Let's start, since I have, I have my laptop right here to look up some things, so that if you see me looking down, that's what I'm doing. Um, also, I hope this angle's okay. I know it's a little bit off, but it'll be fine. Okay, my first, or sorry, my number eight book. Let me fix this a little bit. For some reason, I always obsess over how the camera's angled, and it's just a part of who I am, I'm sorry. Okay, so number eight, we have Permission to Feel by Dr. Mark Brackett. This is the one and only nonfiction on my list in my top eight. Um, so this book is about unlocking the power of emotions to help our kids, ourselves, and our society thrive. Um, so I'll put a picture up on the screen of what the cover looks like and a brief synopsis from Goodreads as well. Um, but yeah, this book was really enlightening. I um, have been really wanting to learn more about my mental health and about others' mental health and how your mental health affects everything else in your life. Um, something I'm really passionate about. So this book was super helpful. I think especially if you're a parent or a teacher, this talks a lot about like teacher dynamics with children and their emotions. So I think that that would be really helpful to learn um, and I would definitely recommend reading it. So yeah, that one's really good. And I think that the audiobook's fantastic. That's how I listen to this. 
um, was through audiobook. So he, I believe he narrates it himself, the Dr. Brackett. So that one's really good. I think next on my list is going to be this book, which is the one historical fiction on this list. And that is Daughter of the Reach. I believe that's how you pronounce that. Uh, by Louise Fine. Also, side note, this book has deckled edges. I believe that's what it's called. And that's one of my favorite things on books that I didn't realize that I really liked was the little deckled edges. I think that's chef's kiss. I'm a big texture person. I like the texture of this. So, um, okay. So <laughs> if we want to, so I, I'm not going to lie. I'm a pretty easy crier when it comes to books. I cry pretty easy, which is one thing I love is that books bring out a lot of like emotions, whether they're negative emotions or positive emotions. Um, I think books can really do that for people, which is really cool. So I will put up a brief Goodreads synopsis on the screen if you want to read it. But this book, um, just the power and the emotions from this book is what made me put it in my top favorites. Um, this is a World War II historical fiction um, and you are following, so obviously lots and lots of trigger warnings for this. Um, definitely look those up beforehand. Um, it's a pretty intense read and I would say if you're not ready for that, don't read it because it's very intense. Um, but to me, it was so powerful in the way that it spoke because what's really, and honestly like parallels to like, obviously this was, I don't remember the year, but this was World War II times. Um, and you're in the middle of Germany in this book, um, in the midst of the war. Um, this, I believe it's actually like preluding the war. Yeah. So you're actually like leading up to the war here. Um, the kind of tagline is she must choose between loyalty to her country and a love that could be her destruction. Um, so you're following Hetty, whose father is a really big, um, oh yeah. So it, she's the daughter of a high ranking Nazi of, of officer. Um, and it, it's, this is, I've never seen anything really done this way where you're following Hetty, um, and you get to kind of watch her grow up, um, and her best friend is Walter, who is Jewish, um, and you, you know, that's kind of a, a storyline we've seen before. I still think it's a very important storyline, um, especially for a historical context, but I think the parallels between what's happening here and what happens even now in our society with racism and things like that is very important because it really dives into that, those beliefs, and you start with Hetty and she believes that her father is correct and um, eradicate the Jewish people and that they are wrong for just being Jewish. So you start with her and her very negative destructive beliefs um, and you kind of get to see that that she's been brainwashed by her family to believe that these things are true um, and it allows you to kind of like not sympathize because like I don't think that that's what we should do here but it allows you to kind of see insight into like why she has been made to believe this and she's also a child in the beginning um but you slowly get to see those thoughts and those um destructive like patterns unravel and she begins to ask questions and kind of question her father and her family and kind of break away from that which i think is really cool and really important and i like seeing that done in books um kind of the breaking downs of, of those destructive beliefs so but when i tell you it's heartbreaking it is heartbreaking. So if you enjoy that in your books, but yeah, I think this touches on a really, lots of really important subjects. So this is my number seven. Okay. So my number six is going to be The Silent Patient by Alex Mikkel. I never know how to pronounce his last name. It's actually the first book I read in 2021. And so we started 2021 off, 2021 off really well. Um, it is a thriller. I will put the Goodreads description on the screen, but you should read it and not read too much into the description. It's a really good thriller. Um, takes place in a, I've made a couple videos on this before, so I'm not going to dive too deep into the subject. I'm just going to put it on the screen, but it's a really good thriller. Awesome plot twist. Um, lots of twists that I didn't see coming, multiple plot twist. And the kind of person you're following is someone who refuses to speak. Um, so that's always an interesting kind of layer on that. So definitely recommend that thriller. That is going to be my number six. Yeah. Number six. <clears throat> and now we're getting into top five. So number five is going to be, um, Watchers by Dean Koontz. My friend Katie actually, actually recommended this to me. Sorry, you can see my ring light in the screen, but there's a dog on the front and a dog is a really big part of it. 
Ah, uh, I love Einstein so much. This is actually a sci-fi and I don't read a lot of sci-fi. So this was, this is also my first Dean Koontz book and I know he's pretty popular. I've since bought a good bit of his novels um, secondhand because you can find them really easily. Um, but this is really good. This is, this like really heavily impacted me and this is normally not the type of genre that I like. So I really think that's pretty cool. Um, so I'm gonna read you the blurb and then kind of give you my thoughts. Um, from a top secret government laboratory come two genetically altered life forms. One is a magnificent dog of astonishing intelligence, the other a hybrid monster of brutally violent nature. And both are on the loose. Um, I will say this book is sl a slow burn in the beginning. You don't really get a ton of information or you get information, but there's no really action until about 250 pages in, which is, I know, I know what you're saying. And this is a pretty long book though, because it's almost 600, it's a little bit over 600 pages. But when I tell you that it's worth it, and I'm usually not one for slow burn novels, I usually like something that throws you right in. Um, I think that's why sci-fi isn't typically a genre that I gravitate towards, because a lot of time they're slow burn. But this is worth it. And I am a really big animal lover and dog lover, so I love the kind of descriptions that you get. Our main character is Travis. Um, and he's kind of, you know, he's at a really low point in his life. And there are trigger warnings for this too. Um, there's a lot of mentions of suicide and um, self-harm and things like that. So just be aware of that. Um, not super descriptive, but just something to be aware of. And pregnancy loss as well. If that's something that um, you want to make sure you avoid, just look up the, the warnings just in case. Um, that's a couple of things in here. Um, where was I at? So Travis is your main character and he's at a really low point in his life and he stumbles upon this dog and he quickly learns that this is not a normal dog and that he is ex in incredibly intelligent and you later find out some information about his origin. Um, and that's all I'm gonna leave it at. But and there's a lot in this story. There's a lot of like self-discovery. There's a lot of love between man and dog and there's a love story between, you know, two people as well and kind of how they come together. Um, and then there's a lot of action, there's mystery, there's thrilling aspects. So this book has it all, honestly. It's it's labeled a sci-fi, but I feel like it falls into multiple genres. So Watchers by Dean Koontz is my number five. We have my number four, which is a manga. And so manga is something that I actually just started reading in 2021. Um, you can kind of see it on a shelf behind me. It's quickly grown. Um, but I, I love manga, I love comics, I love graphic novels, anything in this kind of media. I really enjoy um, and I would say if you've never tried it you should definitely give it a shot um, a lot of the arts really pretty still so you get a lot of the narrative and some really pretty art as well um, I love anime and Attack on Titan is my favorite anime of all time so I see look at this look how pretty um, so I knew that I wanted to pick up the manga to kind of like the last season of Attack on Titan is about to come out and the I believe the manga like surpasses the anime I'm not 100% sure I'm new so don't come for me if I'm not right but essentially with Attack on Titan you are following um you, you have a couple of different main characters but your overarching main character is Aaron Yeager um and he has two friends that are kind of also the supporting like main characters uh Armin and Mikasa and the world's kind of I would say this is like a post-apocalyptic or not post-apocalyptic this would be like apocalyptic world um where there are these beings called titans and they essentially just want to kill people um and like destroy everything and eat people um and that may sound like very like straightforward and like oh but uh, these <laughs> the i'm using this as an example but really like the whole run that i've read so far which i've only read through 10 and there's like 30 something in this manga um it has a lot of like deep rooted like political aspects a lot of like friendship building there's a lot of adventure um a lot of like you're going through these struggles with these characters who are learning to like learning their strengths and their weaknesses and they're like becoming closer and there's like there's so much there's a lot of family dynamics um and there's a lot of really good action in these so i love these and that's why this is my number four it's kind of like not just this volume specifically because this is volume one but like the whole manga so my number three is to no surprise because i feel like i talk about this all the time on my channel and on my instagram is ever the brave from the clash of kingdoms series um one of the prettiest covers i've ever seen i love the way they do these covers by it's, this is by aaron summer also um so this is the second book in the 
Clash of Kingdoms series. The first one is Ever the Hunted, um, which is another one of my all-time favorites, but, and this is a fantasy novel. Um, I think it's considered YA, which I would say yes. Um, there's nothing super like adult or anything about this series. I would say it's not the typical YA, like if you normally don't like young adult because you feel like it's too young or something like that, like she definitely is younger. I think she's 17 or 18, I can't remember exactly. Um, Britta is your main character. Um, she's a super strong, like, like baddie. I love her. Um, she's very independent. She's very um, strong-willed. And I just love a lot of the aspects of Mendoza. Just, uh, I love all of the aspects of her character. She's one of my favorite characters. Um, there's a lot of magic. There's a lot of um, monarchy, that, that sort of thing. And there's um, deception. There's a love triangle. That's really, really interesting. Um, there's just so much good about this book. You get multiple perspectives. Some chapters are from Britta. Some are from like her best friend slash lover, Cohen. And then there's also King Eodrin. I believe that's Eodrin. I don't know exactly how to say his name. But there's a lot packed in these books. And I cannot recommend these enough. They are really underrated, like severely underrated. Um, so I will always, to the ends of the earth, tell people to read these books. There's one more that I actually haven't read. Uh, I believe that's the end of the, I believe it's a trilogy. I believe that's in, um, and it's Once a King. Um, I'll read the blurb for you. Um, Bravery is a choice after saving King. Oh wait, no, I can't read the blurb because there might be spoilers because you're going to read the first one first. So I'm actually not going to read that. So, but read the first one, Ever the Hunted, and then read this one. All right, at number two, we have two, also no surprise if you know me, my number two pick. Six of Crows. I love this book. This book is so good. You get a wonderful, like super fleshed out cast of characters. This is my first book in the Grishaverse um, by Lee Bardugo. There's a lot of books and a lot of series, and I know these are really hyped, but I think that this and my number one pick are hyped for a reason, and I think that that is because they're good books. And like, my thing is, I'm never gonna not read something just because a lot of people like it. I feel like that's kind of silly. Like if it, just because a lot of people like it doesn't mean that you shouldn't read it. If it sounds like something you're interested in, if it doesn't sound like something you're interested in, then don't read it. But don't just not read something because a lot of people like it. And don't get me wrong, I love finding like like books that a lot of people know about, like not as popular authors. Um, I love that because I feel like it helps people discover things that they otherwise might not have heard of um, when someone else starts talking about it but that's how you hear about good books okay sorry I kind of called me um but where was I at oh, I was ranting about how just because something's overhyped doesn't mean you or because something's hype doesn't mean it's bad so that's the end of that rant but this just proves to you look at this art look at this you can't really see it um I will say, I have some, this is my number two book of the year and well deserved. This one had a really close run for first. <coughs> really close run for first. Um, I love the characters. That's probably the number one thing that makes me have this as my number two pick. Um, I think what made this be number two, not number one, is even though like I love the magic system in this book and in this universe. I think that it's wonderful. I think it's really cool. Um, I think they do a good, she does a good job of explaining it, but I do feel like it was a little bit slower in the beginning, which as you, I said before, is something that I, I kind of struggle with if it doesn't immediately grip me in. There wasn't like a super like quick catch thing, but Kaz Brecker, who is a main character, has my heart. He just has a lot of trauma. And what can I say? I find that very appealing. <laughs> um, but no, I think that in all seriousness, like, like she did such a good job with the characters. They're all very diverse. They're all very different. Um, they're all, again, like I keep saying fleshed out, but they really aren't. I love that each chapter, essentially each chapter is from a different member of, I even, I haven't even talked about the plot of this book. Um, essentially you're following this like gang of young adults who uh are in Ketterdam, uh, a bustling hub of international trade where anything can be had for the right price and no one knows that better than criminal prodigy Kaz Brecker so not a good guy allegedly you don't have to read to find out but 
Kaz is offered a chance at a deadly heist that could make him rich beyond his wildest dreams, but he can't pull it off alone. I um, mean, it lists off all the people that are in this. Okay, I'm just going to read it. Uh, a convict with a thirst for revenge. A sharpshooter who can't walk away from a wager. A runaway with a privileged past. A spy known as the Wraith. A heart render um, using her magic to survive the slums. And a thief with a gift for unlikely escapes. Kaz's crew are the only ones who might stand between the world of destruction the world and destruction if they don't kill each other first. So it's like a very like found family, like unlikely friendships. There's a lot of really cool tropes in here. Um, and you really get to dive into all of every single person's backstory, which is really fun. Um, and that's my video. It's just really fun. And it's, there's a lot of emotions. Like it makes, there's some really sad moments. There's some really awesome moments. It's a very adventure action packed once you get into the story. Um, I really was like on the edge of my seat. I read this really quickly because I, it was very gripping once you get into the story. It just takes a little bit when you're learning about all the logistics in the beginning. So, give that a 10. And then, um, my number one read of the year, drum roll. It's really hard to put these in, in like, and grant, know this, every single one of this top eight, I love dearly. They all got five stars. If I had to rank them, this is what it would be because Six of Crows is, and Ever the Brave are really tied up there for my favorites, okay? So my number one read of the year is A Court of Rings and Ruin um, by Sarah J. Mass. This is another one, very hyped, very talked about, very worth it, very worth it. I think the experience of these books have been really fun too because me and my best friend Katie are buddy reading them. Like we are, and I also started annotating this year for the first time. Um, so my tabs all mean something different. Um, it's really, there's, I could explain it, but like each color is like for a different. So blue is really sad moments. Um, uh, yellow is bad bitch moments. Green is like interesting plot points or like something I want to like go back to. Um, orange is like sweet moments. Um, like between typically Rise End and Feyre, but also like just any moment that makes me go, oh. Um, pink is quotes. Um, I think that's it, yeah. Um, but yeah, I started annotating this series along with buddy reading it with my friend Katie. And that was just really fun. And this has to be my favorite one out of the series. I know people have different opinions. This one is the most, like, I can't explain to you how invested I am in this world. Like, it is one of the best series I've ever read, ever. And so I definitely recommend it if you enjoy fantasy, if you enjoy, like, strong female lead characters, if you enjoy um, character relationships within, like, they have their whole friend group, the inner circle, which is fascinating. And I, I love just reading their banter back and forth. Like, I could read it all day long. Um, I've read all of them except A Court of Silver Flames, which I have, which is up there, and I'm going to be reading that this year. Um, me and Katie were just taking a break because we read one, two, and three, like, in succession, like, really back to back because that's how much we love these books. Um, this one's my favorite because it's the most, like, this is the most, like, I would say action-packed. Um, this is less... A Court of Mist and Fury was really close to my number one because just, just, you just, I don't want to spoil it if you haven't read it, but like, but I think this one's my favorite because I love the action, the care. Okay. If I had to sell you, I made a post about this on Instagram, but if I had to sell you on this series, the character development, if you love seeing a character start like at the scum, like bottom dirt of the earth and like find themselves and find their purpose and like find the people that they love, like seeing it, but across all of the characters, it's well, most of the characters is that way. Um, then this, this is the series for you. There's love, there's passion, there's hatred, there's um, self-hatred. There is a lot in these series, in this series, but I think this one's my favorite. I think I can say that. My number one of the year. But all of these books are very important to me. I love how I feel like I have to justify because I like don't want to hurt their feelings, my books. But these are my top ones of the year. And oh, ah! thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Let me know your favorite reads of the year.